So I would like to treat two examples on um, all recovery calculations under immiscible displacement. Um, so let's take the first example. The relative permeability ratio of, of a linear reservoir as a function of water saturation is given in table 4.1, and this is table 4.1. Plot the fractional flow curve, and using the fractional flow curve, calculate the following, the average water saturation and fractional flow of water breakthrough, the displacement efficiency and water breakthrough, the average water saturation and fractional flow of water at water breakthrough. So you can assume that capillary pressure and gravitational effects are negligible. Uh, other reservoir and flip properties that you require is as follows, velocity of 25%, initial water saturation of 20%, and then um, viscosity of water and oil as 0 0.9 centipoids and 1.6 centipoids respectively. So step one is to calculate the, what, the fractional flow of water. You will not be typically be given the fractional flow. So you will need to use equation 4.9 to calculate the fractional flow of water. Of course, you know um, all these parameters are available. So the next thing will be to plot the fractional flow of water as a function of water saturation. And this is what you have here in 4.13. So the next thing will be to determine the saturation at the shock front, the fractional flow of water at the shock front, and then the average saturation behind the, of, of water behind the front, all at breakthrough. So you need to draw a straight line from the initial water saturation tangent to the fractional flow curve as shown in figure 4.3. Extend the line to read the points. I extend the line to the points. Um, I'll show you on the graph. And then the, this is extend the line to the point where FW, FW is equal to one. And then read the values for these parameters at 0 0.6, 0 point, 0 0.62, 0 0.88, 0 0.68, respectively. So let, let's look at it. So this. The plot to the left is from um, Nzekwe, uh, Petroleum Engineering Practice, and this is the same fractional flow curve which I produced using Excel. So you see, after you've done the fractional flow curve, the next thing is to draw a line of tangent from the uh, connect water saturation all the way to touch the fractional flow curve and extend it to FW is equal to one. And you will see if you read off the, at the tangent, you read off the fractional flow of water and then you read off the SW and that's what I've written in this point. Say, okay, I got 6.2, but they have 6.2163. And then, 0.68 is the average water saturation. That's when you extend this all the way to FW is equal to one. So to calculate the, remember that we said the, um, the microscopic the displacement efficiency, if I remember, I think it was one minus SWI of SW naught. So, this equation can be used. The SWBT, in this case, that's the average water saturation behind the front minus um, initial saturation. So this is the saturation as obtained from extending the tangent to FW is equal to one and this is the connect water saturation. So this gives you the uh, displacement efficiency of that of the process, and which is get as 0.6. So I think up to this point is pretty straightforward. So the next thing will be to determine fractional uh, water flow and water saturations after breakthrough. So what is advised is that you extend 
expand the fractional flow curve as shown in figure 4.14, that's below. So you see, so it's the same, it's the same plot here, it's just that this from the point from the tangent and this was blown, was, um, was zoomed into. So you see this, the, so what was done is they took SW2 to be 0.68. Know that this is arbitrarily. The important thing is you could take about 5% over the um, SWF. You know, SWF in our case was 0 0.62. So in this case, they took additional 6%. So I think they just used 0 0.60. So this is arbitrary, you know. At times you could be given the saturations at which um, it should be calculated, or if not, you could just take maybe 5%, you see, an example. So at this point, you now draw a tangent. So from that point, draw a tangent to FW is equal to one. That tangent, and that tangent, you get the average water saturation behind the front after breakthrough. In this case, it is so. This is 0.68. Mm -hmm. Remember that now, this after breakthrough, this you are not drawing the tangent from one, you're just drawing the tangent from this point to um, one, to FW is equal to one. To get the slope of the tangent, remember, you draw. You could use this simple relationship, one minus FW, FW in this case is 0 0.97. And then the average saturation, which is 0 0.71 minus SW, that's SW2 in this case, which is 0 0.62. If you do this, this will give you one because this is 0 0.03, this is 0 0.03. So the derivative of the fractional uh, what fractional water flow to uh, that of um, water saturation is is unity. Note that the the uh, dimensionless relative water injected is the inverse of this derivative, and that's why you have one over one. So in I think in, in um, petroleum engineering practice, this is where the problem was terminated. So I, I wanted to illustrate the use, the direct use of the um, Welch equation, Welch equation. And remember that after breakthrough, your um, oil, oil recovered, of the cumulative oil, oil recovered, oil produced in poor volumes, can be um, is expressed with this equation. Note SWE is 0 0.68, FWE is 0 0.97. That's the point at which you have decided to, um, that's, that's a saturation and fraction of above that of the saturation and breakthrough at which you want to get your uh, or do your recovery calculations after breakthrough. So what I have done, and I, I, I did this for convenience. So 0 0.62 is the, is SWBT. Mm -hmm. That was the um, shock front saturation, water, uh, water saturation at the shock front and breakthrough. So since I'm looking for you, you see why I took, so what, I, what I've done, so this is the direct use of the Welch equation. So this is how you go about it. So first of all, I'm using an increment of 4% and you see why. The reason is that I'm interested in 0 0.68. So what I've done, 0 0.62, 0 0.66, that's four, four additional, 0 0.04 and uh, yeah, 0 0.04 takes you for 2.7. Of course, this is obtained already. This is the fraction, the fractional flow, fractional water flow at this saturation. This is read off from the graph. And then, um, okay, so let me see, do I have it? Oh, I, I didn't include it here. So what, what I did was I found, I fitted 
the fractional flow uh, points to a polynomial, you know. So based on the polynomial, I was able to get what the saturation is exactly for this part. You could read off the plot also. You may not, of course, you won't get it to these um, decimal figures because you are doing a visual read off, but this can be read directly from the plot. And let, let's look at it just to assure you. So point six six, you know that this is point six five, this is point seven. 0.66 is somewhere here. You see, that's somewhere below 0.94. It's about 0.94 there about, you see. So that's... Um... Now, so what is done, these are, this the um, incremental uh, saturation. Of course, it's 0 0.04 for both cases because that's what you add to get here. This incre incremental fractional water flow, so that's delta FWE is this minus this and this minus this here. So what you just do here, this um, delta FW divided by w, delta SW is this divided by this. So is this ratio whether here or here. Now, SWE um, asterisk is the average of saturation. So it's SW E1 plus SW2 divided by 2. So this point 0.64, this point 0.68. This WID is the inverse of this. So in this case, okay, let me put the text. Is equal to one divided by delta F W E. Let me put a bracket divided by delta S W E bracket so five. So this is, so the dimensionless cumulative water injected is gotten from the inverse of what you have in column five. So I said in this table, the values of uh, the ratio of um, the incremental fractional, water, fractional of water and saturation have been calculated rather than determined graphically as suggested in text. The values of SW asterisk in column six are the midpoints of the saturation increment at which the discrete values of the VID have been calculated. So that's how we got here up to this point. Okay. So proceeding, even though this was not um, required in this question, the next thing will be to calculate all recovery as a function of the um, cumulative um, water injection and time. So remember that this equation is what relates our cumulative oil produced to cumulative water injected. So, but this is the catch. Remember that, so we are using the midpoints. We're not using these saturations, we're using the midpoint. And then we we'll use, so to get SW minus SWC, we also use the midpoint. So remember SWC is 0 0.2, 0 0.64 divided minus 0 0.2 gives you 0 0.44 and this is 0 0.48. Now you will need to get the FWE at FW star asterisk at the corresponding SW, uh, SW asterisk here. So you need to go back to the 
plot go to, to your functional flow curve to get this and of course one minus fwe is cutting from subtracting what you have in column three from one when you wid is obtained from the previous wid is wid is obtained from the previous table and then once that is substituted in, in the equation then you get the dimensionless cumulative water produced. So typically that is how this is done. So I've shown you in this example, this is the use of the graphical method, which all you need to do is to read off your SW2, SW2, and then of course you need to get a you need to get the tangent at SW2, you need to get the average um, saturation behind the front, and of course from the inverse of the derivative, you get the cumulative water injected. For the for the um, direct use of the world equation, first of all, you you get your saturations of interest above um, SWBT, the um, equivalent or corresponding water fractional flow. Preferably use a, a constant um, increment for your saturation. Remember, I did all this because what I was interested in is uh, 0 0.68. So, once you get that, you find this is like your pseudo derivative, which is column four divided by column three. And then the next thing in column five is the midpoints between the saturations and WID is just the inverse of what you have in column five. Once that is done for the all recovery calculations, you will no longer be using the SWs, you are now using the midpoints. SW minus SWC is the midpoint minus your initial water saturation. You will need to get the corresponding fractional flow, um, fractional water flow for those midpoint saturations. And then once that is done, you get one minus FWE. And then this is still taken from the previous table, plug all that in the equation and you get what the, um, dimensionless cumulative oil production is. Um, now, okay, one, one important point, yes, and good I remember that. If you, I'd like you to take a look at, so this is WID from the um, direct use of the weld equation 0 0.9892. And um, from the graphical method, remember that our WID was one. So you see, we are pretty close, regardless of the method you choose. So let's go to example two. So water has been injected at a constant rate of 1,000 barrels per day per well. So just before I go, uh, go ahead, example one is taken from petroleum engineering practice, but as a quick while, example two, is taken from fundamentals of reservoir engineering by LP Dick. Water is being injected at a constant rate of a thousand barrels per day per well in a direct line drive in a reservoir with the following rock and flow properties as listed. Uh, relative, the relative permeabilities for oil and water are presented in table 4.2, and the flood pattern geometry is as follows. So um, the deep angle is zero degrees, that means the reservoir is horizontal. This time between injection wells is taken to be four to five feet. It's about thickness 40 feet. Distance between injectors and producers taken to be 2,000 feet. Assuming that diffuse flow conditions prevail and that the injection project starts simultaneously with all production from the reservoir, determine the time when um, water breakthrough occurs and determine the cumulative oil production as functions of both cumulative water injected and time. 
So you see in this, in this case, we have, so this should be for relative to 4.2. So you have saturation, uh, relative probability to uh, of the water, and then relative probability of the oil. Of course, in this case, you need to get the ratio. And then you now use equation 4.9. Of course, you know you have the viscosities given to get the fractional flow of water. Remember to state that capillary and gravity effects are negligible. So the next thing would be to plot the fractional flow curve. And um, you see, I have, this is my own plot, of course, in MS Excel. So what I've done, in this case, the SWC is also 0 0.2. So you draw a line of tangent, you draw a tangent, touch the fractional flow curve, and then extend it to FW is equal to one. So this is the shop front saturation and um, water fractional flow and breakthrough. And this is the average water saturation behind the fronts. And I went ahead to evaluate the, uh, so for, for calcul all recovery calculations after breakthrough, you will need, so what I did is I picked, um, okay, so 0 0.7, okay. So I picked this point, yes, I remember now, I picked 0 0.52 so that I can compare my own values with, um, what is in LPDIC? LPDIC, there's a calculation at 0 0.525, yes. So that was the choice, that was, that was, that was what, because what, what you typically do is to find, uh, do the all recovery calculations at different, at different um, saturations above SWBT. And also, so if you take the tangent, so if you take a tangent at, um, take a tangent at 0 0.52, the average water saturation is 0 0.615. You know, this 0 0.56, is the average what is the saturation behind the front at breakthrough. But if you take a tangent at 0 0.52, you trace it. Even though this my line has moved, this, this is 0 0.56. Okay, no, this 0 0.56 is for the average water saturation behind the front front at breakthrough. But now, if you now take, so this is 0 0.52, this is where you, 0, 0 0.52, and this is where I take the second tangent and extend it for, to FW is equal to one. And then this is the average water saturation uh, uh, of the front after breakthrough. So that said, from the, Fractional flow curve, I can get S, the S, SWF, FWF, and SWBT, that's the average there. And then the points, the values right off of the plot I, I stated there. At water breakthrough, NPD is equal to WID, which is 0 0.56. That's here, you know, it's the average um, water saturation and breakthrough, and then this is SWC. So this gives you, so this answers, I think the first question getting, the first question was determine, no, it doesn't answer the question. This just determines the um, recovery and injection and breakthrough. So to calculate the water breakthrough time, hmm, remember, I think it was equation 4.13, it was Qt is equal to WID divided by QIDS. So what we do is if you combine equations 4.29 and equations 4.31, and uh, if you ensure dimensional consistency, you will have WID times the length. This is the distance between injector and producer. Here, this is the area. This is porosity would give you this. So of course the time is going to be WID times L A phi is one pole volume divided by Q. And of course, this is bringing it from barrels to cubic feet. And then this is taking it from 
uh, days to years. So if you substitute, you see, um, six to six to five times 40 is for the area. You know, six to five is given as distance between injector wells. So this times 40, this is for area. And then the 2000 feet, that's the distance between producer and injector is for length. And of course, this is porosity. And of course, we are giving the we're giving the produce, production rate as a thousand barrels per day. So once you substitute, of course, this gives you, if you want to write time in terms of WID, this would be 4.39 WID. And then, now take note in DIG, I think this value is 1.54 or so, but it's 1.58 because I think I got um, 0 0.56 while in DIG it's 0 0.55, but I decided to stick with my values. So the next step will be to determine the cumulative oil production as a function of both cumulative water injected and time. So take note in DIG, they use the direct, um, they use the wealth equation directly. The graphical solution was not uh, obtained. So I have gone ahead to work at the graphical solution. So what I've done is for, so that you can compare, I've taken my SW2 as 0 0.2, 0 0.52. Note, I think in the book, there is a calculation for 0 0.525. So if you take 0 0.52, remember it's also shown in, in the, in um, my functional flow curve, 0 0.52 and the corresponding um, functional, water functional flow 0 0.86. So that's SW2, SFW2, and then extending the tangent you draw at SW2 gives the average water saturation uh, behind the front after breakthrough to get the um, slope and that saturation, of course, is 1 minus FW2 minus uh, the average saturation minus this uh, property is SW2. So if you take that, this, this will give you 1.474. And of course, to get the cumulative water injected is the inverse of the um, derivative. And this is what it gives you. So if you use the, the equation that you use the, if I get to, to get the, um, Cumulative oil production and adjust. So now I've gotten the WID from the from the chart. I plug it in and I can get what my uh, cumulative uh, produ uh, produced oil is. So I've put a note here. Please compare with the LP dig, you know, so that you can see how close my answer is to what you have in the text. Now to get the corresponding time, that's for this particular saturation profile. Recall we wrote time in terms of dimensionless um, water injected. So here, of course, you have the WID for this, for the SW2, and then you can get what the time is. So I, I will encourage you to look at the um, to look at the examples and see if you can reproduce the results or if it makes any sense to you and if you have any challenges, uh, don't fail to um, revert and I will address them. Okay, so our class ends here.